is dead. Uh, I, I don't know why this guy's in the news cycle, but um, this is just really repulsive, actually. Um, we have an uh, incel basement dweller, uh, Osmond Gold, which, like, you know... Uh, <laughs> I've actually I've seen I've seen these videos before. I mean, I'm not like a fan or anything, but I know he's just really good at World of Warcraft. I I haven't played since like I don't know, like 2014. I'll admit I was a uh, <clears throat> I consider myself an Asmund Gold fan, but that's because I'm a gamer. I really like his gaming content. Uh, I think he's a really good video game streamer. Now lately, he started to dip his toes into politics. And the problem is he has absolutely he's like on the first tier of political knowledge where you just you look at some shit on CNN or Fox News and you just absorb it. And you're like, I guess that's my reality. He's not educated. So when he gives these takes, everybody gets outraged because they expect him as someone as big an influencer as he is, is to be somewhat educated. But he's not when it comes to the Palestine thing as we'll cover a bit later, he thinks this is just like a religious, he's still on the like religious level of the Middle East uh, conflict. He's back in the Richard Dawkins like war in Iraq period where, you know, all the new atheists came out and said, well, Islam is a bad religion. It's all the religion. There's nothing behind this. Certainly not American imperialism. Pay no attention to what Israel's doing. So... This is uh this is the video of what he actually said. So yeah, let's check it out. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 banned for this, guys. So let's check out what he got banned. If you want to consider a genocide as a systematic killing of a group of people, they have genocide built into Sharia law right now. So no, I'm not going to cry a fucking river when people who have genocide that's baked into their laws are getting genocided. That's not true. I don't, it, I don't give a again, fuck. Again, though, he's They're on terrible. the first level of propaganda. He's like the Reddit atheism, r slash atheism. Like, like, exactly. He's like, he's like six years behind. Yeah, he's he's not on this. Le he's not on a level where it's responsible for him to be making these comments on his platform at all. Like, no, there's no excuse I mean, for this. Not, not at all. <laughs> I gotta take this dog for a walk after. All right, let's hear the rest of it. Well, um. oh, people, it's not even a question. It's crazy that people don't see it that way. They'd be doing this. Yeah, crazy, right? Because it's fucking retarded. That's why. Yeah, that's that's why, sir. It's, it's because into your their brain is not working. Are getting genocided. I don't give a fuck. They're terrible people. It's not even a question. It's crazy that people don't see it that way. They'd be doing the same thing. Hmm. And how much did they kill? As many as they can. They're not able to kill as many people as Israel because they don't have as many bombs and as many weapons. But if they did, they'd be doing the same thing. That's it. Just takes enough. That's right. These people are not your allies. They are not the same as us. They come from an inferior culture that is horrible. Wow. It kills people for their identity and it is directly antithetical to everything Western values. First of all, like, I mean, there's, I mean, uh, like there's truth. There's like some truth to what, what he, when he says that if we like, like, let's say if we were funding an Arab state, uh, weapons and money, in order to genocide people that that's happened before saudi arabia and yemen mm -hmm. barack obama did that i mean trump did that but we you know that because like being a proxy of american imperialism doesn't make you itself an inferior culture you're more so you're more or less a victim i mean look at what's happening in ukraine Every country that we use as a proxy for our imperial goals throughout the world ends up becoming a shithole. Israel is a shithole right now. Ukraine is a shithole. And it's because yeah, we went because in there and we said, hey, let's go to war with like three different countries. And just like keep because this tax scheme, this like money laundering scheme going. 
Because the West is, if we're in a civilization game, they're trying to get a domination victory in a world where other factions that are rival to theirs are trying to get an economic or a cultural or diplomatic victory. They're trying to control as much as they possibly fucking can, which is why they have to stick their dicks into every other country. It's like, you know, and the shit he's saying here, it's like, this is indistinguishable from IDF propaganda. And that's because this is the kind of slop that you get fed on nightly news segments. You get told that there's scary people who who aren't as woke as you in this other country. And so they deserve whatever comeuppance we can give to them. That's how you Kill justify and manufacture consent for the atrocities over there. Anyway, let's finish this. The people slot. is Israel because they don't have as many bombs and as many weapons. But if they did, they'd be doing the same thing. That's it. Just takes enough. That's right. These people are not your allies. They are not the same as us. They come from an inferior culture that is horrible. It kills people for their identity and it is directly antithetical to everything Western values stand for. And it is an inferior culture in all ways. In all ways, it like is just that doubling simple. down. No, I don't feel bad for them. I don't feel sorry for them. I don't care. I don't support them. Children burning alive. <sighs> this is where this argument falls apart. Like, <clears throat> like children. That's, kids can't that's do genocide. The supposed Western values that we're talking about. This is yep. the Western values that we celebrate. Anyway, let's not get banned. I don't know why. Why? Why did we have to try out Hassan to like talk some sense to this guy? <clears throat> he's also on Twitch and he's a he's a gamer. Is that why? Um, they have a previous relationship, but also this is good for both of them because Asmund Gold is facing a shitload of bad PR right now because of his comments and he's getting banned as you can see um, and also Hass for Hassan it's good because it's election season and he can get more people over to his side uh, to which he can push them to you know support the Democratic Party that's Hassan's whole purpose it's to take people who are outside of the liberal sphere who are to the left of that and maybe even anarchist and plug them back into the DNC Hassan is essentially like the liberal version of uh, Tucker Carlson or one of the other ones. <clears throat> That's why they got him, because it's mutually beneficial for both of them. Because Hassan gets to humanize uh, Asmund Gold. Gets to humanize him and kind of push him in the direction of like, guys, no, no, no. Uh, he, he didn't really mean that. What he meant was, and it's like, okay, now he's better. And, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's also the clout like Asmund Gold and Hassan. You know, they they sometimes collab. They share a lot of the same spaces and they share some audience uh, overlap. So it's good for business to, you know, have him seen in less a negative light than the atrocious comments he made. You know, at the end of the day, they're just both looking to get that bag. Let's just let's just let's see what he said. View them trying to that. push that on other people as the same type of uh, basically <clears throat> inferior culture. I think that it is inferior. That's why we fought for years and years and years to get rid of it. Okay, so yeah, um, obviously, chattel slavery was justified by Christianity, and chattel slavery was abolished with liberation theology, which is also Christianity. So Christianity, religion, played uh, a formative role in both sides of, of chattel slavery, both in the justification and maintenance of it, but also uh, uh, played a formative role in the in the end, in the abolition of it, right? That's so, true, but I want to make so, sure that we're drawing a distinction real quick between following a religion and then having a government that is a religious theocracy yeah. that bases its laws off of that religion. I think that most people that are of any religion just want to be able to get along. Okay. I think that's very much true. So, but the problem is that if you have a government 
that is based off of that religion. I can't think of a single government that's based off of a religion that isn't bad. Well, I mean, Americans are uh, the American Republican Party is dead. So what about Israel? I don't get yeah, is he, he like a both sides kind of person or what? No, no, no. Um, he makes a very to to Asmund Gold's credit. I watched this whole fucking thing. He he very much makes it clear that he doesn't support Israel. Um, he he he. he he, his application of government based on religion is across the board. So again, it's it's Loretted atheism, sort of religion is the cause behind this. Whereas people who educate themselves under understand correctly that religion is a scapegoat. It's the it's the shield they hide behind when they're trying to do Western imperialism, when they are trying to commit acts of unbelievable atrocity in the Middle East. They use religion as a justification and as a problem. They're like, their religion makes them bad, so we get to wipe them out. And then when that pendulum swings all the way over, people like this get to say, oh, well, you know, Israel's bad too. And because Israel isn't directly the West, you can kind of have this like, our hands are tied moment where you can blame like both sides. Whereas in reality, the West is completely supporting what Israel is doing. Um, and their, their claims to be powerless to stop them are obviously fake. Um, so yeah, he's uh, TLDR. He's, really he's not, that he's, no, not no. he's not, he's not pro Israel. Yeah. He's not pro Israel as best as they, as they, as they can, but they're trying to make them they've made it legal to uh teach that it, it's mandatory now to teach the bible in oklahoma yes so you saw so that yeah you, yeah i did so you you understand that those are people some of which are genuine like religious zealots and others who are simply utilizing religion as a galvanizing factor to be like see i'm a religious person right like oh i think people that have we different know aspirations like that. people have different motivations for yeah. why they advocate for certain things okay so that very I think same that principle, that's very common that people yeah. people use religion as a tool to, uh, you know, like kind of enable that type of behavior. Great. So, sure. so this is here, herein lies a problem. Mm -hmm. That very same principle exists in the Muslim world, which is endlessly diverse, and uh, there are, you know, it's the it's the fastest growing religion. It is. It is. I think it might have actually uh, overtaken Christianity in terms of numbers. And, I think it's a 1.6 billion now. That's and the yes, number I and, and yeah. religious governance differs from country to country. I'm Turkish. I come from a, a country that is nowhere near as fundamentalist. It's supposed to be secular. Right. Obviously, Recep Tayyip Erdogan is very similar to Donald Trump in terms of like, uh, in terms of how he utilized Islam to make himself, uh, to give himself a more prominent role in Turkish society, uh, was able to both <laughs> bastardize religion and also simultaneously use it for uh, social repression, social oppression, and cultural repression in general. So I personally understand, uh, uh, with with uh, like I've it withstood the direct consequences of that of a society being redesigned, and and perhaps that is the reason why I I know that there's a difference between simply monolithizing an entire religion versus people who are championing religion islam in this case mm -hmm. to to meet their own uh uh authoritarian governance uh demands and that's simply what it is uh a, a lot of a lot of people don't like the way that their government operates there are gay muslims there are queer muslims there are queer trans people um they have unfortunately not had any breathing room to be able to advocate for civil rights in many parts of this region because they have been consistently pushed back against and also don't have any fucking time or space to be able to do such a thing when they're under direct occupation that's the so, issue but, and but would they, you come to the same conclusion that basing decisions off of that religion and making laws based off of that religion is a bad thing yeah of course i don't what do you mean okay. I, yeah i don't so, okay. i don't agree in theocracy so, at all awesome I don't, and I don't, so, but like but like wouldn't that mean that it would be inferior or, um no i wouldn't I, I say i wouldn't say that any okay. culture is inferior to one another i no would however way. say that i would however on, say man. that especially as it pertains to palestinians 
the reason why yeah, I don't think sure. it's inferior over the one another is that inferiority is a very dangerous is a very dangerous and and treacherous language to utilize especially when there are uh you know hundreds of thousands of of uh, dead and and wounded people that are in the crosshairs of, of I, israeli violence i, I think, think that, that it, like it, it so works. If this is a semantics issue and if, if like me saying inferior if you think that that's dehumanizing or problematic then I don't necessarily completely agree, but I can see where you're coming from. Well, the reason I would say worse, or I, you could you could you could replace that with any other word that is just like not as good as. Yeah, but of course that doesn't represent. But even the people, then, it doesn't matter because then person. there's something that's better, right? So he he just completely backtracks. <laughs> he just um yeah because he's <clears throat> because he's feeling a lot of pressure now. Uh, who said it? Javier made a good point. They have the same management company. He is signed to a large management company with ties to big money. I'm not sure if that's true, but it would make a lot a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, Asmund Gold is feeling the pressure. He's noticing that his comments he's are banned. getting he's him in. He's yeah, he's he's banned. So that's a big problem right there. His career is gone. Now, that's it. Now, in addition to that. In addition to that, he's he's feeling a lot of backlash from a large group of people. Um, so there could be one of two things here. One, he he just didn't say he misspoke. He he didn't effectively communicate what he actually meant. And I'm not going to be completely bad faith with people because I misspeak. I talk for a living. I misspeak all the fucking time. Um, everything I say is right and everybody else is wrong, but sometimes I do misspeak. I'm still right. But anyway, we're, we're going to move on. Um, <clears throat> he either misspoke or what he's feeling now is he's feeling like maybe I was wrong about this. So I need to portray you, that. You need to stop saying shit that I don't know what I'm talking about. I like, mean, at the end of the day, if I said something like this and someone corrected me and I looked into it more, I would just be like, look. I was wrong. Okay. I didn't know all the details and I said some shit off the cuff and I was stupid. I'm sorry. I've changed my views. That's um, kind of what he's doing here, more or less. A, li a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Little, little bit. This last part's important. You know, hundreds of thousands that are in the crosshairs of, of I, Israeli violence. I, I think, think that, that it, like, it, it so works. If this is a semantics issue. And if, if like me saying inferior, semantics issue. if you think that that it's not semantics, bro, that's fucking racist. You what you said was racist. You said they were an inferior culture. Well, he's saying if this is a semantics issue, then instead of the word inferior, I replace that it that with any other word. But he's basically saying like our culture is better than their culture, which doesn't even make any fucking sense. What because if I he's said Jewish people were inferior. What would I? What kind of? You can clip that too. But like if I if I said that, you know, what 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 would what what kind of rain would that bring me compared to well, things about Palestinians or Arabs? He right? says genocide's baked in. Let's pretend that's one hundred percent really. They, yeah, they changed, let's bring they changed the, they changed the Hamas. I don't I don't know what exactly he's referring to, because like Yeah. But let's ahead. pretend that's let's pretend that's 100 correct. If you want to talk about genocide being baked in, think about your own good old Christians who came over to North America. What the fuck did they do? First thing they did was genocide everybody on the fucking continent. So if you want to talk genocide being baked in, that that pendulum swings in your direction too, Bucko. You can't say America and the West are superior in some way when genocide. And the blood of gen people being genocided is also on our hands as well. You can't do that. And yeah, look at this. It's not even true. But again, this is IDF propaganda. This is what is shoved into your skull. No, dude, if you go, if you look up, look up Sharia law on, on Twitter or anywhere else, it's all prop propaganda about fucking gay people and the, the, the head, head, head coverings. Like that, they, like they're, dude, 
it's not as as oppressive as they make it out to be. If you actually go to these countries, there's it's actually a fundamental. Way more, there's actually way more impressive things happening behind the scenes in the United States that are, you know, I mean, we're getting blackmailed for our tax dollars actually to go fund. Hey, like, hey, Alon never. I can't, imagine, froze my- I can't imagine a worse country than that, but. Listen, Allah never froze my bank account for protesting against mandates. I'm just going to leave it there, okay? Okay. We're close to that, though. That's happening in the future. Oh, oh probably. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. Actually, that that's a good that's a good segue. That's a good segue. Yeah, I think of I think of these segues. That I'm doing this on purpose. I'm not just really? shouting out. Uh, yeah, this is all planned. It is 5D chess. Uh, just trust the plan, Greg. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, I, 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 I got to spot opportunities, and I see what's going on. But the road has been squashed, folks. That's that's it for Mister. Uh, what's his real name? Uh, Zach. Zach. Hold on. Let me. Yeah, he's a Zach. He's a Zach. Have you seen his living space? Yeah, he lives like an absolute goblin. So the fact that he's calling anyone else inferior is really fucking weird. Uh, his name is Zach Rar. I don't, I don't know if he actually has his full name published. It's just Zach. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm really disappointed. Because I obviously can't support anything he fucking does now because, like, he's made himself, he's essentially chosen a side. And even if he backtracks now, it's like, okay, well, we know what this guy's going to say. And we know the level of education he has. This guy's a maniac. Look how no, he, li- no, he lives like an actual goblin. He lives like a fucking troll. I'm trying to see like how. What are you doing? I'm trying to see a video of his like living space. I saw the video once of like a tour of like his apartment. All all you have to do is just look at the setup. He's got cups everywhere. Yeah, He's got fast food really, all over the place. Yeah, it's really gross. It's actually really gross. But. Yeah, that's it right there. Like, that's how he lives. So to call anybody else's culture inferior, it's like, dude, why don't why don't you like clean your room? Literally, though. Um, yeah, like, like, you know, glass houses and all that. But either way, like. Asmund Gold is a perfect example of why people who rise to the level of fame that an Asmund Gold would rise to. Uh, should have some kind of responsibility to educate themselves. For example, let's say I got famous overnight. Let's say all of a sudden my Snow Himbo, Himbo channel, which is at Snow Himbo everywhere, by the way, on Kick, YouTube, and uh, and Rumble. Um, let's say that exploded to 10 million people. If someone asked me off the cuff, hey, um, what do you think... Let's see. What, what are your honest opinions about uh, the debel- the current developments in Tibet? I would go, I don't actually, I'm not actually up to date on what's going on in Tibet right now. Uh, so I'll look into that and I'll get back to you after doing enough research. The same way that like, if you're asked to give like an off the cuff commentary about what's going on in Gaza, like, if you're not very well read on that subject, you just go, look, I haven't looked into it that much. Um, obviously, the loss of any instant life is horrible, but I don't I don't know enough about the situation to give a take. That's kind of how I weigh in on most things. And that's what anyone with a sizable platform, I feel, should do. Um, if you feel like you have surface level knowledge, as a rule, if you feel like you just have surface level knowledge, one there's a good chance it's propaganda because what bubbles up to the surface for the normies to consume um, num num is usually propaganda. So if you feel like you have surface level knowledge, just admit that be like, look, I only have like surface level knowledge or just 
like be completely transparent about where you got the info from. It's like, hey, what are your thoughts about uh, Gaza? Well, I've only really seen it covered, uh, you know, from like CNN or Fox News. I've only really heard it from these specific sources. Uh, I feel like I'll need to dive in and kind of do more research before I uh, give my personal opinion on the topic. That way people go, okay, you're, you're basically giving like yourself the ultimate out because people will go, okay. He, he's only really heard like official information on this. We're going to probably, we can probably expect like a fairly uneducated sort of opinion, but at least he's let us, at least he let us know that he's not super educated on this topic. So if you preface anything with that, then whatever comes out of your stupid head next, people are going to be like, oh, it's coming out of his stupid head because he listens to stupid Fox and follows stupid Tucker and that he gets his stupid shit from stupid Alex Jones on stupid band dot video. And instead of politically homeless, which is tomorrow's news today, by the way, um, and people will get it. They'll be like, OK, OK, this guy's not really yet. He hasn't researched and that's it. You give yourself a perfect out. And that way people are like, okay, yeah, I, I kind of get it. But at least he, at least he's honest with himself enough to say, I don't know enough on this topic. If someone asked me anything about a topic I'm not super familiar with, I would say, I don't really know a lot about that. I will get back to you once I know more about it. That's what everybody should do. And I feel like these big streamers, a lot of it I feel is narcissism because they feel like they don't, I feel like a lot of them don't have, they feel obligated to not admit they, they don't know certain things. I can see, I see a lot of these big streamers and they, they, uh, destiny is another one where it's like, they have like a confident opinion on everything and they never go like, I don't really know the answer to this question, or I don't really know what the situation here is that much. Um, because no one wants like to admit, a lot of, no one wants to admit that they're wrong about anything. Yeah, that's the thing. You got to admit, like, you got to admit you're wrong. You've got to, the one bit of advice I can give our audience, everybody who's tuning in here, which again, I really appreciate. Live your life as the eternal student. You are always learning. You're I always figuring learning. shit out. You're always studying. You're yeah, always I don't investigating. Know everything. I don't claim to know anything at all, actually. Neither do I. Nobody does. But if you live your life in that way where you're always learning and you're like, oh, I have to look into that. Oh, hey, that would be a cool thing to dig into. I'll go here. Instead of just farting out of your mouth, just chunks of diarrhea out of your mouth about every single topic, then first off, you're going to look a lot more human to the public, which is always a good look if you're like a prominent voice on anything. Number one. And number two, I forgot number two, but number three, I also forgot number three. So anyway, um, 